Welcome to another session of spectroscopy or analytical techniques. Today we will understand about inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry which is also called as ICP AES in short. Before we move on subscribe for more such informative videos and tap the like button if you like the video and drop in your comments after watching the video. At the end of the session you will be able to elucidate the principle of inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy, explain the instrumentation and the working of ICP AES and also list out the applications of it. Let us understand the principle behind ICP AES that is excitation of atomized metal with inductively coupled plasma followed by the emission of light of its own characteristic wavelength and the correlation of the emitted light with the concentration of the metal is inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometry which is also called as ICP AES. That is it is very very similar to the flame photometry. If you have not watched flame photometry please do watch the link is at the top. Instead of the flame we are going to use inductively coupled plasma for the excitation of the atomized metal and when this excited atom returns back to the ground state it emits light of its own characteristic wavelength. Okay, and what it is, how it is different is it is mainly used to detect trace elements. Even if the element is present in the PPM level, it can be determined using this ICP AES. We will understand the principle in detail. That is when the solution enters the nebulizer along with the organ gas, it gets converted to the aerosol mist. And and when this is sprayed into the plasma which is at a temperature of almost 10,000 Kelvin, the solvent evaporates leaving behind the solid residue which further vaporizes to form the gaseous compound and this atomizes and the metal atom gets excited by the plasma heat and this excited atom returns back to the ground state emitting light of its own characteristic wavelength. Why we say this is each element emits light of its own characteristic wavelength that is nickel at 393 and copper at 325 nanometer and so on. So if I have plenty of elements all these elements will get excited and returns back to the ground state by emitting light of its own characteristic wavelength. So we can look into the instrumentation part. We have an organ cylinder and the sample. The sample enters the nebulizer along with the organ gas and it gets converted to the aerosol mist and this enters the spray chamber. That is the fine particles along with organ gas enters into the center tube of the uh, plasma torch and the heavy particles or the larger particles are drained at the bottom. First we will understand the construction of the plasma torch. It is mainly made of quartz glass or it can also be made of ceramic. Normally it is made of a quartz glass tube. We have three concentric cylinder uh, or tubes and we see the center tube which is very thin and through the center tube which is also called as the injector tube the sample and organ gas is injected and through the middle tube as well as the outer tube organ gas is inserted or supplied but the role of the organ gas is different when it enters the middle tube it is used to create the plasma flame and the outer tube will be cooling down this temperature that is the temperature in the center is very high so in order to protect the quartz tube it acts as a coolant the organ which is supplied or circulated in the outer tube and around this plasma torch we have induction coils that's why we call it as inductively coupled plasma because the plasma is created due to the uh, heat created in the induction coils. So we can have different methods in this method it is inductively coupled plasma. So the, we have induction coils when the radio frequency signal is generated by the RF generator an electric electromagnetic field is formed around this plasma torch okay this is going to help for the formation of the plasma we will see how the plasma is formed when the organ enters the middle tube first the in the presence of electromagnetic field that is when the plasma torch is switched on it gets ignited the organ atoms gets ignited by the tesla coil 
what is a tesla coil is it's like a gas lighter as we are using a gas lighter to in ignite the flame the same way the tesla coil is used to ignite the organ atoms so what it does is it supplies seed electrons then seed electrons are oscillating and it reaches the induction coil and this way it ionizes the organ atoms and the organ atoms forms organ cations and releases further electrons these electrons further ionizes the organ atoms entering into the middle tube this way there is the high kinetic energy of the electrons and the collision between these electrons and the atoms that is the organ atoms entering the high temperature plasma of about 7000 to 10000 kelvin is formed here okay instead of flame used in flame photometry we are using plasma this is nothing but electrically conducting neutral okay it's very important neutral because we have cations which are positively charged and electrons which are negatively charged overall charge is neutral okay it is a mixture of cations and um electrons this mixture only we call it as a plasma and this plasma is sustained at 10000 kelvin and for this we are using organ coolant so that this temperature is maintained so actually if you look at the temperature from out to the inner part the temperature slowly decreases actually the temperature at the outer portion will be at 10000 kelvin and by the time it enters the inner portion it will be some 6000 to 8000 kelvin now we'll come back to the principle that is when the sample is sprayed into the plasma at this heat all what we saw in the previous slide that is the solvent evaporates and it forms a gaseous mixture and then the it gets atomized and the metallic atom gets excited due to this heat present in the plasma and returns back to the ground state by emitting light of its own characteristic wavelength here if i have multiple elements in the sample all the elements will undergo this process and each element will emit light of its own characteristic wavelength so in this system at a time we can analyze all the elements simultaneously okay so we use a different type of monochromators here i'm showing a you a rowland ring monochromator where we have a concave mirror and this emitted light it is a polychromatic light because we have the uh, emitted light of many elements so this polychromatic light enters through the entrance slit and falls on the concave mirror and it splits into individual components and focuses into individual slits and when it comes out it is focused into each independent detector we have a series of detector to detect each and every emitted wavelength separately so we have multiple detectors so we are using a photomultiplier tubes and this photomultiplier tube will generate current proportional to the intensity of the emitted light and sends the data to the data processor and the data processor records the data and gives the output to us we can also use an ordinary diffraction grating which also splits into many components but here we are using a single detector which is also a photomultiplier tube we are using a movable detector that is it detects the intensity of one wavelength and generates current proportional to the intensity of this light and sends the data to the data processor and then moves its position to the next wavelength and then it captures that wavelength and sends the data to the data processor and so on this way also we are going to analyze the multiple elements together at a time but this will be slightly time consuming because the detector is movable but in the previous case because we are having all the detectors present and each detector detects individual uh, elements this process is very fast but in both the cases we can determine the multiple elements with a single sample that is in flame photometry for each element we need to spray the sample separately okay here it's not required so we look into the same instrumentation in detail source that is plasma torch plasma is an electrically neutral conducting gaseous mixture that is it's a mixture of cations and electrons it is heated inductively by coupling it with an oscillating magnetic field that is radio frequency the frequency generator gives this and that is why we call it as inductively coupled plasma aes that is atomic emission spectrometry 
and here we can see that the three concentric cylinders are very clearly visible that's why I have taken different pictures here you can see the center tube is very thinner and the middle tube and the outer tube an RF generator creates the RF signal that is radio frequency signal an intense electromagnetic field is created in the induction coil and the plasma at temperature of up to 10,000 Kelvin is created due to the ignition spark of the Tesla coil I said how it works and the nebulizer in spray chamber it converts the liquid sample to the mist and sprays the fine particles along with organ gas into the plasma and the heavier particles are drained at the bottom atomizer converts the analyte molecules into gaseous atoms and then excite uh, this is excited and returns back to the ground state by emitting light of its own characteristic wavelength monochromator this polychromatic light is dispersed into individual wavelengths using a diffraction grating or Rowland circle or ring. A detector detects the intensity of light with different wavelengths using photomultiplier tubes that is it generates current proportional to the intensity of light or we can use other detectors like charge coupled devices or photodiode arrays where these lights fall as an array or fall on the array of semiconductor detectors here also we are having multiple detectors data processor and display data from these detectors are processed and multiple wavelengths are measured at the same time so as we know already higher the concentration of any element higher will be the intensity of that emitted light and we can look into the applications of this in agriculture we can analyze the agricultural products food samples soil samples etc in biomedical applications different metals present in biological comp uh, organs okay it can be brain liver breast milk etc organs or samples in geology presence of elements in the rock samples in forensic department in crime scene food samples blood samples soil analysis in the for, uh, crime scene and etc can be analyzed for different elements present metallurgy already many elements will be present in alloys metals etc the trace elements which are present also can be determined environmental science what uh, wastewater analysis metals in soil water comma should come here soil water etc petroleum industries different elements present in oils lubricating oils and even gasoline gasoline is petrol even in trace concentrations it can be determined beverages any metallic impurities if at all present in trace amounts that also can be determined and other miscellaneous applications uh, trace elements in polymers and cat uh, catalysts etc so wherever trace elements are present we can go for this method that is icpa yes because the plasma temperature is very high compared to the flame used in flame photometry even if very minute quantities are present it is being determined uh, it is identified and undergoes this excitation and returns back by emitting light of its own characteristic wavelength so that's all for this session let us meet in another session with another topic until then bye bye please do subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and drop in your comments and tap the like button if you like the video bye